Hi everyone, I'm now here in this session to talk to you about the stages of labour and what I would say is you don't need to get too hung up about the different names of the stages of labour. You don't really need to know the different names of the stages of labour, just it's good to have an understanding of the process of what's happening in labour and what's happening to your body and why you're feeling different things at different times. So the first part of labour is what we refer to as the latent phase of labour, but what you may well have heard of it being referred to as slow labour, when you hear of stories about so-and-so being in labour for several days. And it's your body starting with contractions that stop and start and stop and start, and this is the first part of labour. And within latent phase, quite often the pains are irregular, and you might get strong pain and then a not so strong pain. And as I've said, it can go on for a long time. And at this point, the contractions aren't necessarily in a regular pattern. Now, um, at this point, you may have had um, a show, which would be normal. And just to use the props that we've got, the latent phase of labor, in labor, we're talking about your cervix opening up and your cervix starts off shut but within the latent phase of labour, it's starting to gradually open up. And also your cervix starts off very thick and it's starting to be pulled up. So what it's doing is the contractions are pulling up the cervix and they're opening up the cervix. The next stage of labour is the first stage of labour and that's when you're four centimetres dilated or in active labour. Now on this dilatation chart, four centimetres dilated is all the way until here when your cervix is approximately opened up about four centimetres. But to get to this stage can take a long time and this is why we stress the importance of staying at home for as long as you possibly can because getting to here can really take a couple of days in some cases. Once you are past four centimetres dilated, Usually then that's when you're having regular contractions and they would be coming every few minutes and should have been coming every few minutes lasting at least 30, 40 seconds, sometimes up to a minute. And really they need to have been coming regular like that for about two hours before things are really starting to happen and your cervix is starting to open at a more regular pace. In the first stage of labour, it moves from being in a regular pattern into a more um, regular pattern of contractions and when you speak to the midwives for advice over the phone they'll ask you about the pattern of the contractions and guide you and whether they think you're at the right stage of labour to come into hospital. During this stage of labour it becomes harder to cope as well so just be mindful of that um, if you feel like you're able to breathe through you're possibly not in established labour or the first stage of labour but as the pains are increasing in strength that's a sign that things are starting to happen. Now, your body has the contractions which then helps the cervix to dilate all the way through these different um, phases of the cervix until you get to be 10 centimetres. So here, for example, is six centimetres. Here is eight centimetres. And when you are fully dilated, that's when all of the cervix has disappeared and there's, no uh, and there's nothing holding your baby back. To get from four centimetres all the way to 10 centimetres dilated actually takes, on average, about 12 hours. So it's a really long time, and it's a really long time for you and your birth partner to be in the hospital environment. And that's another reason why it's such a good idea to stay at home if you're coping for as long as you can. When you are in labour, the midwives um, know how far dilated you are by doing a vaginal examination with your consent. And that's where we put two fingers into your vagina to find the cervix and we can feel how open the cervix is, how thin the cervix is, but also, I don't know if you can see, but these funny little lines and triangles are to mimic the markings on your baby's head. And this helps us to define the position of your baby. During the labour process, what happens if you imagine this is um, your pelvis in labour and your baby with the contractions is getting its head pushed down and its body 
pushed down more and more and more through the pelvis. And the contractions each time are pushing, 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 and then also pulling, pulling, pulling up your cervix and opening up your cervix to enable your baby to pass through the pelvis and to be born. Now what is quite tricky, what you don't really need to get your head around, but helps us to understand what's happening in the labour, is when your baby descends into the pelvis, it has to rotate and then rotate again in order to descend through the different dimensions within the pelvis. So when the midwives are examining you, as well as feeling how open or how dilated your cervix is, they're also feeling the position of the baby by feeling baby's head vaginally and feeling baby's body abdominally when they feel your tummy, it helps them understand better how the labour is progressing. So that's why we do that. Now, towards the end 